Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talk Junkies, where tonight's going to be a very interesting night, as it is each and every single week here at Talk Junkies. It's been a uh, very uh, eventful and interesting past two weeks. I did just have another child. That's my number uh, My number thir- three child. Or Damn, I can't even talk. Going on number 24. Yeah. My third child I just had, his name is Callum. Boy, we did a home birth, all natural. My wife is an absolute boss of a lady woman, whatever. You know, she's either, what I'm saying is she's, She's the best. She a, she a bad bitch. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> our daughter, our, both our daughters were both there. They were able to see it. They witnessed it. A baby just being born. It was very beautiful. Um, just overall, a great experience. Highly suggested if you're able to do it um, physically and all those types of things, emotionally and your health. If you're able to have a home birth, I definitely highly suggest it. It's, it's where it's at. Was your, you had a midwife. We did have a midwife, yeah. I'm assuming that that is like, I wouldn't say a necessity, but but up there. Like, yeah, you do yeah. not want to do it without that. Correct, yeah. Don't do a home birth <clears throat> unless your husband's done in an immense amount of research. But still, even then, just to... It know, is better to have someone else who's done it a billion times. Yeah, they have a lot of different herbs and teas. And, like, instantly right after, right after the baby came out, Callum came out, um, I forget what it's called, but she's taking droplets of some type of herb to stop bleeding. And if that doesn't work, then... You know, they, they result to uh, Pitocin, which would stop blood clotting, whatever. But that we didn't have to go that route. But there's a lot of things that happen. Um, the midwife we had, she was 10 years, she had 10 years as a reg, as a labor and delivery nurse in an actual hospital. She didn't deliver, but the lady who did deliver, she had delivered over 160 babies. So it's an art, man. It's an art. Yeah. yeah. Baby comes out, you got to cut the cord. I mean... Well, I don't know. There's just a lot that goes. So when's uh, what's happening first, a vasectomy or number four? Oh, vasectomy, man. That's ha- that's <laughs> happening. That's happening Thursday. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's he's on lock. He's like, yeah. Yes. Let me uh, let me get that. Which, by the way, man, it, and it yeah. kind of it kind of said it today. It was really weird when I went for the consultation because I've never had another guy touch my balls, right? And you never had the the whole cough. And actually, now that I think about it. You're right. I guess that did happen when I was younger for physicals I, in, in high school. I think school. even then I had female doctors. Maybe I had luck of the draw. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But being an adult and, and you know, I haven't been to the, I, I barely, rarely ever go to the hospital. Being in my 30s to have another dude. Dude, it's all medical. Nobody I know, cares. I know, man. Nobody cares. No one cares, but it's still, it's just, I don't know, man. I'm going to, man, when I'm 40 and I got to get a colonoscopy or whatever, I'm going to make jokes while there's a finger in my butt. Like, it is what it is. Well, yeah, they have to do that too when they check your prostate. Yeah, yeah, that's for, what I'm saying for prostate cancer. But either way, yeah, man, that's why we took last week off. He uh, he was born last Sunday at like five twenty six in the morning. So you know, it was just a wild night. Obviously, there's no way we we're gonna do a podcast, but here we are. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Mentioning the fact, I, it just kind of flew. I mean, obviously, I knew about it, yeah. and Jesse knew about it last right. week. You told us and that's why we didn't have the podcast. But I kind of forgot we skipped a week. Yeah. Which we have some backup content, but fuck it, man. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's roll with it. Let's do it, bro. I think if anybody's got an excuse, you got an excuse when you just did a you know a home birth. Yeah, no, it was it was legit. But uh, here we are, man. Tonight, there's a lot of shit going on in the world. Um, you got Russia, Ukraine type of shit going on. Them attacking. There's so many different I ways to look I at it. I wish I could speak more on that, but I'm so uneducated on that topic. That Same. Like, I've watched a few videos. I mean, there's a lot of different fucking TikToks and short videos of civilians participating in war and shit. It's just nuts. That's the thing. I feel like a lot of, like, the. I feel dumb, but I don't know the actual reasoning behind a lot of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I don't either. It's very. Even when I tried looking into that. I almost the the wording and stuff. I still didn't, and maybe I just read a really bad article, or not a well written article. But I didn't understand the reasoning that they were giving me in that article. I was like, none of this makes sense to me. I don't get it. There's been some videos where it says why Russia's invading all this, and I didn't really look into it or check into it. I mean, because all of this has kind of really went down right when we had our kids. So, um, I guess shortly before that, but still, it's still crazy. I mean, they're attacking yeah. nuclear reactors and shit. And, <clears throat> it's wild. Whole situation's nutty. There's just an, an actual like war going on that's not surprising. Someone's profiting. Yeah, which is what we're going to get into tonight. Uh, really, what I want to talk about is uh, inflation. And I know we've uh, kind of briefly talked about it on the podcast, maybe not briefly, but more in depth. Um, tonight is what I want to do. 
and who's profiting whenever there's a time of crisis and you've heard politicians say this before um that you got to capitalize on it and so people are and corporations are and when you look up the, the 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 number of what these corporations are making it's very staggering man and to think that the reasoning behind inflation what they're saying you can blame some of it on the war in, in Russia and Ukraine. This was happening before that, though. No, no, I know, I know. But that when you're seeing gas prices hit, you know, here in the Midwest where we're at, you're seeing it uh, anywhere from like three fifty nine to like oh, three eighty, and it's hit four dollars before in two thousand eight with a with a housing crash or whatever. But um, that's where you're, you're getting the oil blame is from that. But mm-hmm. and, but it's not only that we've talked about it going to the grocery stores and stuff like that. I just I just filled up my tank today and it was pretty expensive. I think it was like three forty a gallon. Yeah, which to me that's hot. I remember back when I was like sixteen or seventeen, we had that weird time during the the George Bush era where or the George W. Bush era where it went it, it went from a dollar sixty nine to like four dollars overnight. But I from what I remember, and I was young, I think that only lasted a few months, right. maybe a little, maybe almost a year, and then it went back to like back to normal. Right, <clears throat> and that's kind of what got me thinking. I'm just like someone's profiting during this situation. And again, what they what the excuse is is that the demand is so high for a lot of these product uh, products and 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 things that we're doing. People want to say they're going to call it economics one on one, which I feel like that's what a lot of people will, will go back to and revert to and say, "Hey, it's just economics one on one, supply and demand." You know, you mean one one oh one oh one one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just like, um, it's just it's simple, you know. There's just so much demand that these companies can't keep up, and that's why they're able to charge higher prices. And then you you. you they, they can say that that's fine, but when you look at their bottom line and the amount of money that they're profiting, I think that's when it gets kind of sketchy. So the issue I have with it is that there are... I don't have a problem with price hiking on stuff that's not needed. For example, like, so it just got announced or whatever. I got an email about it for, like, Netflix. Netflix is going up again. Like, the price of Netflix is going up again. And everybody can bitch and complain and blah, 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 blah. But, like, so many people are still paying for it, myself included. Netflix isn't a utility. It isn't a necessity. You know what I mean? Like, even though it has become very, like, like who doesn't have Netflix or at least is using a friend's account? Like, everybody in their home in the United States as far, you know what I mean? The majority of people have fucking Netflix. So they raise the price. They don't even have to blame that on inflation. They can that that is economics one hundred and one, where they can be like, "Well, y'all are paying for it. Right. Like we're presenting a product, you're paying for it. We're putting out better shows than we ever have." Like, I get it, you know. And if you get mad about it, you don't have to have it. Like, you don't have to pay for it. The issue comes into play when it's like necessity level stuff, like milk, and you know what I mean. Like, yeah, when you like your groceries are so expensive that you can't afford shit, and like your housing or whatever, like when rent hikes and all that stuff. That's the stuff where I'm like. Man, do these prices actually need to raise? <clears throat> right, and, and then that's the thing is like the the biggest thing is like it, it would be interesting to have someone come on the podcast and try and talk about it. But you, I want to meet some people who are up in that higher echelon of people who are dealing with this type of thing, like in grocery stores. Like, is it the? It's definitely not the store manager who's making all these prices go up. It has to be no, at a no, corporate, that's no, that's corporate way, level. That's way above. But like, just for instance, like you look at. Um, so corporate greed, uh, corporate greed is Chipotle increased its increased its profits by 181 percent last year to 764 million dollars, giving its CEO a 300 or sorry 137 percent pay raise to 38 million dollars in 2020, and blaming the rising cost of a burrito on a minimum wage worker who got a 50 cent pay raise. Yeah, no, that's the, that yeah. was Bernie Sanders who said that. There's a whole so I've seen a bunch of that stuff, and you always. You know, take it with a grain of salt. You got to do your own fact checking and double check some of these things. Because for sure, even some of the stuff I want to believe in, I've looked in afterwards and been like, ah, this isn't accurate, actually. Like, they're, you know what I mean? Like, it. I mean, you can look at a whole many, bunch of different websites, you know, and then. So, like in 2020, you I'm see. I'm saying just because, a, just because you see a post or a quote and it goes with what you believe, right? Don't automatically assume it's true just because of that cognitive bias where sure. you're like oh this is the side that i'm on yeah so it must be true but i think like in this this type of situation though when you can look at multiple different websites and see that the amount of profit from these corporations oh, are it, massive no i've looked in like i said i've seen a lot of it and i've looked yeah. into it and a couple of them are are off but a lot of them are right where it talks about like uh, 
let me see if I have it on my phone, but like McDonald's and some other companies and stuff where it's the same kind of thing where it's like. So 2020 at Apple at $51 billion net, net profit or net. Yeah. Net income in billion U S dollars. Then you had a, you know, Brookshire Hathaway, Microsoft in the, in the 40 billions. Then you have Facebook at 29 billion. Um, Verizon, Johnson and Johnson. And one of the weird ones for me was CVS. In 2021, CVS was in like the top 10 of profits. And, and you know what that is? That's from the, va- the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's from all that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not seeing anything like this was 2020 during the pandemic. I'm not seeing, I mean, Home Depot's in there at 12.87 billion, Fannie Mae at 11, 11 billion. I'm not entirely sure where like the food would come in, come into play there. I mean, there's McDonald's raised their prices even though they topped 23 billion in revenue in 2021 profits soared 59 percent from a year earlier so they made 59 percent is a huge increase from one year to the next you know what i mean like so that goes back to like you said that when you see that much profit you're going to raise prices because you know people are going to keep coming and, yeah. and, and granted like mcdonald's you had low prices you have the dollar menu and all that shit so i yeah, get it's it. just i the best way to put it is the example that you gave with uh, what company did you say at the very beginning? I mean, Apple and was it Apple? No, no, no. Oh, the, Chipotle. Chipotle, the, man. And once again, Chipotle is not like a needed thing, but I hate the the blame being put on minimum wage workers. We've talked about this before. I've talked about this a lot, and this doesn't have to deal with just. I'm trying to stay on the subject of inflation, and this does branch out from inflation a little bit. But there's always that constant like hey let's put these let's put the poor people at war you know what i mean let's put the people making minimum wage whatever that is in your state let's put the people making minimum wage against the people making double what they make which by the way double minimum wage is still jack shit like that's still nothing you know what i mean like yeah oh man instead of 15 dollars an hour you're making 30 dollars an hour like big fucking whoop de doo but they're putting those people at war I've talked about this multiple times with the EMTs against, you know, burger flippers and all this stuff where there's like the people making $30 an hour see the people making 10 and are like, whoa, 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 why should they get, why should minimum wage go up to 17 or 18 bucks an hour? I used to make 17 or 18 doing what I'm now. I've worked really hard to get my raise to go up to 28 an hour or whatever. Like stop fighting with each other about that stuff. And look at what you just said. The CEO of Chipotle got a hundred and whatever, so 70% fucking raise. Yeah. You know, you got all these big companies giving out these huge bonuses to not just, we always see the CEO, but it's multiple people. It's not just the CEO. CEO. It's a whole bunch of the corporate ups that get these big bonuses and stuff. And I'm not saying their job's not hard and all that jazz, but like these ridiculous bonuses. And then they try to play it back and be like, but you should be mad at the people that you know, are fighting for more money. Oh, there's a worker shortage. Oh, there's a worker shortage. And people don't want to work because they're lazy or, oh, they don't want to work because they're too good to make $14 an hour. And they're like, well, I'm not going to do it unless you pay me 18 an hour or whatever. Fuck off. Like, don't get mad at those people. Like labor should sell for higher. You know what I mean? We talked about this the other day, like two weeks ago, but we didn't talk about it on the podcast. We talked about it afterwards outside where in my mind, and maybe I'm wrong here, but there's that whole time, time has value and money has value in different ways, but they're also like conjoined where theoretically your time should be worth more than just money. And by getting a promotion or moving up in a company, you should get an easier job, maybe have more vacation, more time off and all this stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean you should make more money And the whole, we talked about it when I talked about like owning a business kind of thing. And I'm like, man, I would pay my employees more, even if it meant me taking a, taking a cut and making less. And it's like, why would you do that? You're the, you're the owner. You should be making way more than them. I am making way more than them in time. I get to sit back, have passive income, get all this money while I sit back and I'm not saying do nothing because obviously for the first few years, you would have to work really hard to build that business. But eventually down the road, sit back, do nothing, have this passive income coming in, and I should be able to pay my employees enough for them to, like, they're doing the work. Like, you're paying me, like, you working for me, you are paying me by allowing me my free time. I don't have to go to work. That's my fucking payment. 
I've got passive income coming in so I can afford everything I want, my housing, my food, entertainment, all this stuff. And I have all the time in the world because I don't have to go to work anymore. I've retired. I've fucking made it. I've owned a bit. You know what I mean? I've got it. And I should respect you because you're the one actually doing the physical labor or the mental labor or whatever it is, depending on your field. And you should be paid appropriately. And I feel like that doesn't happen in America. No, it doesn't. And that's the thing is like you get the excuse of economics 101 or whatever and say, and they're saying that, oh, the, the, again, this is what I'm. That's greed 101. That, exactly. And they're, they're blaming it on the supply. And I, I truly want to know if the supply is so high that they can't meet the demand. But even if that's the case and you charge more because there's not enough of it, people are still raking in these large amounts of money. Like if, if inflation is so high because there's not enough supply, right? Mm-hmm. And they're charging more. How are they still making a profit? At, at, at a substantial amount of profit. Okay, yes, they have to profit. They have to make some business, type of they money. They have to make a profit, yeah. But we're talking insane percentages here. We're not talking... Like higher than they have before. Yeah, exactly. Not like a 2 or 3% increase. In, in You're talking like 10 plus percent with some of these corporations. And that's what I'm saying. Is like, is it really a supply and demand? Is inflation real or is it artificial? And these people are charging these large amounts of money because they know they can and people are paying it. And they're raking in billions, if not more, you know, billions and billions of dollars. And paying out, this just you have these 1% of people just making this insane amount of money. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't want to... And again, yeah, I'm just, this is all I opinion. feel like we're rehashing on stuff that we've already said a lot, but it is still important to me. I, I don't want like to feel like I'm like no, repeating myself a lot. But I don't but. think we've really dived deep into inflation and, and what's the true cause and is it real? Is it real or is it artificial? Even it, like I said, let's say the supply and demand. I think it's real. You think the supply I, and demand is real? I think that, well, I mean, yes, but I think that inflation, what is happening right now is real, but it's for the wrong reason. You know, like, once again, I'm not very educated on this, but I think that, yes, it's real. It's happening. We're seeing it right now. And when one company goes up, it affects other companies. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like a snowball effect. Like, if these companies inflate prices, that's going to affect these companies, and they have to as well because they're buying stuff or using product from these companies. So they're like, this company that makes, you know, item A, to make item A, they need B and C from this company. So since the price of B and C went up, the price of item A over here has to go up as well. So like, I believe it's real. The only issue is I think that it's, I don't think it's necessary. Like it's only happening because people are greedy and want to make more, 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 more. And I'm like, man, at a certain point, like, don't you have enough? Like let some people who actually don't have stuff and are like, dying and can't afford health care and can't afford medicine and all this different shit like let them have some you don't need a third fucking yacht you don't need a yacht at all by the way especially during a crisis of supply and demand where you can't keep up with those types of things but yet they still want to make a profit while others suffer and pay the ridiculous prices that they're asking it's like for instance oil giants bp reports highest profit in eight years on soaring commodity prices so you see, and, and that's the thing is like, how much are they profiting? Because uh, however much you pay per gallon, the, mm-hmm. re- the, the rest is like tax from what, from what I've heard from people who work in the oil industry. A lot of the money that you pay on per gallon is taxed. It's not, you're not truly paying for how much it is. Okay, I get for, what you're saying. Because the tax is already written into the price on yeah. gas. Yeah, so what I, I think that's kind of where I just get lost. And I'm sorry that we I might be circling back. It's just... Uh, let me let me just say a couple more examples. Cereal maker Kellogg forecasts f- uh, full year profit growth above market expectations, right on higher product prices that helped overcome labor strike distributions and soaring input costs in the fourth quarter. Um, protector pr- uh, Procter and Gamble sales jump as consumer brush off rising prices. McDonald's to raise prices despite record revenue. Amazon stock soars fifteen percent after earnings while hike Prime membership fees. Um, s- s- I just, I just don't get it, man, like how greediness is allowed. And is that even capitalism at that point? I mean, it is. That is capitalism. That's why it's always funny to me when Jesse's like, oh, man, capitalism works if people aren't corrupt. And I'm like, no, this is, even without corrupt people, that's exactly how capitalism works, which is, and I know that a lot of people out there hearing this are going to hate me for this, and I'm sorry. I think it's because you've been slightly brainwashed. I have too. We all have in our own way. 
for different things. I'm not saying I'm 100% right here, but I'm saying if you truly believe in a system, it'd be like me being 100% socialist. That's insane. Pure socialism doesn't work fucking either or pure communism or any of them. But to think that pure capitalism works is also just as insane. Like it doesn't. You need to find that like you have to mix and match and, and mash some things together and people talking about like socialism being so bad and stuff. I'm like, man, and we've said this before on the podcast too, but if you're tuning in for the first time, like, man, socialism is already alive and well in the U S and it's mostly affecting the rich. Like you don't think that government bailouts for, you think that your little, like during COVID, you think your little tax or not tax, your little, what was that stimulus. called? The stimulus. You yeah. think those little stimulus checks that everybody got was, Oh man, that's, that's socialism. Look, just government giving out free money. What about, all of the PPP loans for all the PPP loans for all these companies. What about them bailing out the airlines and bailing out all these huge companies and stuff? And you can be like, oh, well, we need the airlines and whatever. Man, in real capitalism, they wouldn't get bailed out. If they didn't have the backup liquid funds to stay afloat during that situation, they go bankrupt and someone else buys them out, eat, eats them up, and, and I feel like that's what used to happen like business. growing up. Like, like that, that is capitalism. Yeah. You bailing these companies out is not capitalism. That is socialism. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Well, so let's let's just take it back for one second, and let's say that there truly is a supply and demand issue. And when we went to the stores, you see things that you which there is a supply and demand. Yeah, issue, where you right? run, where they, that, we, that run, truly is where we run out of shit and you can't get it. Yeah, and we're still really, dealing with that in, in where who, I work. Yeah, and who knows like the deepness of that? That could be its own conspiracy. How deep you want to go? Who knows? Because I don't really think that one's a conspiracy. I think that that is truly caused by. COVID and COVID. people shutting down. People and shutting down places, factories. Not, I mean, for the longest time, you couldn't get, people thought like you couldn't get certain bottles of liquor and stuff. And they were like, oh man, they're not, they don't have people to make the liquor or whatever. I'm like, well, when you actually look into it, the reason it was is because they're, the glass factories were shut down. The places that made the physical bottles for a lot of these companies were down and just out of like, they didn't have bottles. But how long does that take to recoup? I mean, it doesn't take two years or it doesn't take a few months. Like eventually you get back in a groove and you're back to business as usual. You have to have the employees too, though. That's true. What it's if people true. aren't wanting to go back to work right. because you're not paying enough? True. I hate that thing too of, man, always the whole, oh, people don't want to, I've said this before. I literally said it earlier in the podcast, but I hate that idea of oh, people don't want to work because they're fucking lazy and the government's giving them free money. No. People don't want to work because people are waking up to the fact that places don't pay enough. I talked about this when Blake was on the podcast. Childcare has exponentially skyrocketed how much it is to where people are literally, you've got single moms who can't pay for childcare and by going to work and needing childcare so that they can go to work, they lose money. It costs, the childcare costs more than the amount that they make it work. And then you say, oh, get a better job or yeah, whatever. That's what I that, said. Yeah. I mean, you can only, only, only so many people can have those better jobs. You right. know what I mean? Like there's not an endless supply of that. And there's this thing that like, oh man, if you're not, if you don't have skill and whatever, like non-skilled work and all this, man, fuck all that. Every work, even easy fucking work takes some kind of, like there are, there are people out there who are probably CEOs or really high up in a company that couldn't be a burger flipper at McDonald's. They couldn't do it. They'd get stressed out. They couldn't keep up with the times. They couldn't do all the whatever. So don't act like they're really fucking like, oh man, that's an easy fucking job. It's different for everybody. People have different fucking skill sets. And just because someone's working at McDonald's doesn't mean that they shouldn't be able to get a livable wage. And people are like, oh, that's for high schoolers or whatever. Man, the average age of people working in minimum wage jobs and don't quote me on this. I'd have to actually look it up, but I remember seeing it. It's it's up there. It's like 34 or some shit. Like it's like that's the average age, which means there's people older than that that are doing it. Like you should still be able to live off of minimum wage. It's not just a high school job or whatever. And if that were the case and everybody and they weren't able to live and you only did have high schoolers working these jobs and shit, you wouldn't be able to go shop at that business because those businesses wouldn't run. You need people doing these jobs. These <laughs> unskilled jobs. You have to have them so that you can go in there and buy the stuff that you want in the first place. So pay them appropriately. Yeah. It's very, I think that's very well said. It's very well said. It's frustrating, man. <clears throat> Just again, greed. And we've, we've talked about it so much, man, throughout the, the past four years. And we've, we actually hit our four year anniversary here on talk junkies, actually. 
Ooh. Um, last week or sometime this week. It was like it's right around this time. We've talked about it so much. Just the, the day you had the child. Yeah, it's just the greed, man. It's insane. It's just absolutely insane. Just the greed that runs through the blood in our veins, to where we. we I don't know what the answer is if it's universal basic income. I mean, when you watch Zeitgeist and you get into like the later parts of the actual um, documentary where they talk about just like what it would be like to try and achieve a utopia. And again, I'm never ever advocating for utopia. I don't think that ever will exist within humanity. But what it would look like to have some type of universal basic income and what, what that would entail. And again, I don't know if that's the answer and what we should do to achieve those types of things. I think the first thing is when you look at the amount of profit that these corporations are making and you're looking at net income, this is after all the bills are paid. This is everything like you. Yes, we're running out of things in stores and you can see that in real time, but it doesn't change the fact that within this inflation, people are capitalizing on it in massive amounts of, uh, of dollar amounts of money that it, to me, it seems like it's an unfair advantage to just the everyday worker. It, it absolutely is. Because it, it hits us the most, as opposed to these because people. Because in, inflation goes up. Sorry, I'm not. No, gonna, you're fine. You're fine. Inflation goes up. So all the prices of the stuff that you need, that you're buying daily or weekly or what, groceries. Let's just use groceries. Fuck. I mean, not even gas and all the other stuff you use, but just groceries, water, whatever. Water's a bad example. Utility. Anyways, groceries. You take groceries. All the price of your fucking groceries goes up, right? But are you getting a raise at work? Is the price of labor going up? Because there should be inflation on labor as well. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that people don't realize is you, when you go to work, you are selling yourself. You're selling your body. And I don't mean in the, the prostitute sense. I mean, you're selling your it's body. Essentially your what mind. it is, yeah. You're selling your labor. You are a commodity. Doesn't matter what you do. Burger flipper, CEO, whatever. You are selling your time and your ability, your mental state, your physical state, your physical health, all that, you are selling that for a certain amount of money called your pay, your paycheck, your salary, your income. That should also go up with inflation. Like you are a commodity as well. Like that price needs to go up. And, I'm, and I'm, that's where I get confused is why pay raises don't go up. And, and really- It's because companies can get ever. away with it because they've forced people into this situation of Living paycheck so to you, paycheck. So you think that the Constitution, and, and <clears throat> we've had Dan on multiple times, and I agree with a lot of the things in the Constitution, but I guess, and I'm not entirely sure, because I, I know you went through and read it, you know, kind of in its entirety. I did not. I got a little I've bit read into it. In it. Its, I mean, I don't really remember it real well. It's a lot I, of shit. I've read it in its entirety twice since but, we've had Dan on. But where did they ever really protect the workers in, in, there's, in that there's, sense? From what I remember, there's really not. And the Constitution is a gr- like. The Constitution's a great... This is a different podcast completely. Sure. Constitution, a great thing. Yeah. Like, and we I'm should not, follow it because we don't right now. Right. But that doesn't necessarily deal with the whole worker part. It's kind but of it, a but different... It, but it should, though. It should protect people who work because in order to have a great country, people have to work. And yeah. whenever you see an increase in inflation and all this shit, if you go back and you still look at the federal minimum wage, which I believe is still at like at $7 or 8 somewhere yeah, in that I range, think seven sixty five. dollars I think $8. the federal minimum is right around seven fifty. dollars like give, give or take. That is money. fucking insane yeah, that yeah. we literally are passing bailouts of trillions of dollars to all these massive corporations and smaller corporations too. I'm not, don't get me wrong. They did help some small businesses. Granted, during COVID, over 100,000 businesses, small businesses shut down, which allows these bigger corporations to make more money in maybe create more uh, an artificial inflation if they wanted to. But that, I mean, I don't know, man. Keep, keep talking. I'm just doing some math real quick. No, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but, um, damn, I, I'd completely lost my train of thought. That's what happens when I take a week off the podcast, <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll still try and keep going. But I, shit, I don't know. I truly, I'm at, I'm at a loss, man. So I just did. I just did the minimum wage or clo- I did Oh yeah, sorry, minimum wage. Yeah, that's where I we did were at. Yeah. 765. I don't know if that's the actual minimum. I'd have to look it up. But I did federal. S- the federal yeah. minimum. I did 765 times 40 hours a week, which right off the bat I can tell you that a lot of minimum wage workers are not getting a full 40. They usually stop you at 36 or 32 or something like that. They literally don't allow you to work more because A they, they don't, don't want A they don't want to hit overtime and B they don't want to have to pay for your uh, healthcare kind of stuff. They don't want you to be a full-timer. That's happening more and more in right. businesses. So did that. 
times 40 hours a week, which once again, you're probably not getting, and then times 52 weeks a year, which probably also isn't happening because you're probably sick a couple of days, or maybe you were able to take vacation and take one week off during the year. God forbid. God forbid you have a whole week off. Right. That's terrible. Um, but doing all that, so no vacation, no sick days, full 40 hours a week, minimum wage, before tax, $16,000, 15912 Is so the federal minimum wage. Is the federal minimum wage for the whole year, 16000 We live, I live in Missouri. It is cheap to live here. It is cheap to live here. My rent is 1000 That's before utilities. You add on basic utilities. Not, I'm not even going to add in internet, even though internet should be a basic utility. It's 2022. Every person should have internet. But I'm not going to add in internet. I'm just going to do basic utilities. Between water and electric and stuff, my $1,000 plus utilities is probably like $1,200. Maybe I pay $200 and all that. You know what I mean? Electric, gas, that's all right that shit. It, that's without food you're paying. 1200, that's all your 1200 money. a month. So that's... You know, twelve times twelve hundred. That's fourteen thousand. That's fourteen thousand four hundred. Johnny, you have two thousand dollars to play with, man. Le- I mean, less. Less. Literally less. That's without food or gas. That's without food, gas, cell phone, without internet, without. That's without. That is fucking insane. That yeah. the, the federal minimum wage has so, not changed. So like, everybody, that's insane. everybody gets credit cards. Everybody takes okay, hold out on, loans. Real quick, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. So I guess Biden just had a State of the Union a few days ago, and he wants to push fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage. What is what is that a year? Forty hours. Can we do that real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's way not enough either. By the way, I'm no, pretty sure that's like that's almost double what 7, you just 000. said. Yeah, sixteen. So that that would be thir- over thirty two. So you've said fifteen an hour times yeah. forty hours times fifty two weeks a year. That's thirty one thousand before taxes. Right before taxes, before thirty one thousand. So and that's also you're not going to make that because once again you're not getting a full forty hours a week. Every right. single week. Well, but we're assuming that you hit 40 hours. 52 weeks a And year. granted, if you hit 31,000, you are in a lower tax bracket, so they are taking less out, not as much. Probably not the 30%. I think it's at like 24% or something. Somewhere in that range, they do take out even less. Even then, though. But even, yeah, they take 20% of 31,000. What is that? That's what, like four or $5,000? 20% of, man, I can't do math right I now. I can't either. One, one fifth of 30. Yeah. Uh, like... There's still six thousand, yeah. six thousand dollars. So six grand, you're only making twenty five k. You have ten grand to play with at that point if you're living in your apartment. Ten thousand dollars, just mm. and that is fucking insane. That's ten thousand dollars. If for- you're whether you're Republican or Democrat, wake the fuck up, man. Wake the fuck up. Biden trying to push fifteen dollars an hour. Then you have a Republican president who doesn't want to change federal minimum wage. E- even Biden, no, wait, f- op- fifteen even- isn't enough. That's what I'm saying. Even 15 is what we were fighting for in 2012. That's what I'm saying. Biden, like now it should be like 25 an right. hour. That's what I, that, that's what are, man, people need to wake the fuck up, man. They need to wake up. This is nuts. The fact that it's still at 725, that is, that is a test, a testament to what this society is, is how just insanely uneducated we are to allow our federal government to only offer or to make the minimum wage 725 and us not do fucking anything about it. It's ridiculous. Instead of a trucker convoy and you know, and I know it's developed here in the United States and I'm, I'm in no way, shape or form against the cause of the trucker convoy and what it, what it's about with mandates and stuff like that. Cause I'm pro freedom. I love freedom. We need a convoy for federal minimum wage. Cause I know truckers make quite a bit of money, but if they're going to stand for mandates, we need people do a fucking convoy of cars Whatever it takes, man, because this, that's just nuts. Well, you don't need all that. What you need, and it's really hard to do because, once again, they have kept us. I, I say they, the greater they. They have kept us at a point to where people literally can't afford to be alive, not to live, to be alive, to physically exist and take time off work. Because the way you stop this is the whole great resignation that's happening right now which gets a bad rep because they put it all on a bunch of 20-year-old TikTokers and all this stuff and act like it's just lazy people being like, fuck you, I quit my job, blah, blah, blah. When it's not that, there's, uh, you, you do this by shutting everything down. Like everybody, quit fucking working. Like just stop and be like, I will not work for less than this amount. I won't fucking do it. Good luck. Everybody stand together and do that. And then everything shuts down because you don't have fucking workers. That's kind of what a union is. I'm talking large scale, though, right. across the entire United States. Like, you are the laborer. You have the power. Fuck all the higher-ups. You have the power. The problem is they've taken it away from us because if you are to do that, you can't survive. Like, if you were to stop, like, be like, hey, I want to be a part of this cause. 
I really, I want minimum wage to go up. I want workers to be paid better. I'm not going to work at my job and I'm going to try to get everybody else with me to also not work at where I'm fucking working and st- and take a stand. And hopefully it branches out and more and more people do it across the country. Do that for two weeks and then try to fucking not get evicted. Like, so that's kind of what happened towards the end of the trucker convoy. There was like a, a large, or I don't know how big the movement was, but it was like a, a social media type of environment where they said, hey, no one go to work on like February 24th or something like that. I don't know how effective it was. Well, that's the problem too. I've seen a lot of that too. And I've seen like five different dates. It was like, oh, May yeah, 2nd. Oh, sure. February 22nd. All this different. And nobody follows through and nobody stands up with it. And we can't all come together and agree on it. And then you have... Once again, you have people out there who think they're hot shit because they're making $150,000 and they're like, well, there's no way minimum wage should be $25 an hour. I make $150,000 a year and I work really hard for it. And if minimum wage goes up, my cheeseburger is going to cost more and all this. No, like your cheeseburger doesn't have to cost more. You just need McDonald's to not make a profit of $83 fucking billion. Right. Like they can only, you know, they can make a fourth of that and be okay. Exactly. Like that's the thing that nobody looks at. I'm like... Dude, you can cut, like, these companies, you can cut their profits in half and give that back to the employees. The company's going to be fine. Like, they're still going to expand their menu items. They're still, like, everything's going to be good. So, like, I just, I'm curious on other people's uh, thoughts and people who agree with capitalism and what true capitalism is, if if they even truly know what it is, how you're okay with these people making large amounts of money and these other, you, you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't get people's mindsets when they're like, yeah, man, everything status quo is good. It's fine. The way America runs, its businesses is okay. But if you take a step back and you see what's happening right now across the board for people who make just average amounts of money, I don't get a, how a human being can physically be okay with that, mentally be okay with that, and say, dude, everything's running fine. In a time like this where inflation is probably at its highest point it's been in a very yeah. long time, and you see numbers right around 7% or 8 or 9% when truly it's probably way more than that. I just don't know how people are okay with it. Like I'm very fortunate to be a hard worker and make the amount of money that I do. Like I'm in, in being able to save money, you know, for the mm-hmm. first time in my life, like in the past, like few years, I've been better at, with managing my money. And I think that plays a big role into this as well, but it's where I work too. That allows me to do that when you had, but, but, when you see the lines at McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, or even grocery stores, and you see these people making just minimum amounts of money, like, I don't know, man, you're kind of swaying me a little bit. And I, I just kind of want to hear the other side in, in the comments below on why Johnny shouldn't be swaying me right now. No, in all fairness, I want to as well, because I've said it before. I don't believe you can have a real, I don't believe you can have an honest, like rock hard viewpoint on something unless it's argued against. You know what I mean? And it's hard for me to argue against myself on this one because I'm not educated enough on it. And I would love for someone else to argue against me on it and be like, this is why you can't do that. I, I want to hear the other side. But to me, and I, I've, I've watched people like Peter Schiff um, on the Joe Rogan podcast. He hadn't been on in a while, but the, right, right before the pandemic and right when the pandemic hit, he came on. And he's a true capitalism or he's like, you know, 100% capitalist, capitalism or whatever. I don't know, man. I just did. That's definitely not the answer, especially when you have a population of 7 billion, allegedly, or 325 or 330 million people in the United States. Where'd you get 7 billion? Are you talking like world, world population? World, okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, but when you talk about just the Western civilization, whatever, whatever, I don't know, man. Like to me, it comes back down to time. Like you said, before we started the podcast with me having this third child, this is the first time in my, you know, since I was I went up, obviously, when I'm from 16 to 32, my working days, there were a few times I was unemployed and didn't work for, you know, a month or so. But this is like my first time as being a, a legitimate adult and having kids and taking two weeks off and, and spending time with them. It's been the greatest experience, man. Like, I don't really know how to explain it other than the fact that I love it. I'm not at work. Like, I'm spending time with my family. I'm here. Like, and I don't, you know, like, it's just, it's an amazing thing, man. Like I, I said it earlier before the podcast started and cause people will automatically assume, well, if you're not at work, you're just going to be a lazy piece of shit. Have you been a lazy piece of shit? What have you done? Look at this room right now that they can't fucking see. Yeah. Like you're redoing I, your basement. I, no, like, that's not me. I mean, I've, we've hired someone out. But, and, but I've seen you working on it too. Yeah. Like, like, dude, like. And to your point, you're right. You're like, you're like the first week you might be lazy and you might not. Because you're used to working so much. Maybe you're going to take, yeah, take a week for yourself. Yeah. 
But I mean, honestly, like, dude, your mind starts racing. It's like, what can I do? What can I do? Like, you know, like I have a newborn, so I have to help my wife and, you know, you, you got to try and balance it all out. You, but my mind's constantly saying, hey, Paul, we got to start doing some shit, man. But, and, and eventually you will. And that's my point is that, yes, you're always, there's always outliers. You're going to have, just like you've got the insanely greedy, you're going to have the insanely lazy who don't want to do anything. They really don't. They don't want to do anything at all. They don't want to contribute, whatever. That's fine. Those people exist. But the average person, you take enough time off work, you will realize that you will want to be productive but the, produ- the, pro- the productivity you have will be to benefit yourself and your family and your neighbors and the ones around you. You will like actually enjoy what you're doing in bettering your life and the lives of the people you care about. And not the CEO who's and running your company. not making some giant corporation, not wasting your time making some corporation money while you get fucking, you know, like just scratch whatever like you're getting I can't think of a word but you're getting you know chicken you're getting scraps you're getting fucking table scraps or whatever so that you can continue just barely living and paying rent and paying your mortgage and paying all these fucking things just sliding by living fucking paycheck to paycheck or maybe you've maybe you've earned enough to put some away for savings and you're like man I'm, I feel really good because I can actually take I've got enough to where I can survive for six months I could lose my job a lot of people don't have that a lot of people don't have that but even if you do that's also nothing, man. You just being too, oh, I can survive six months without fucking working. You got to live for like 50 more years. Exactly. Like, Dude, I'm not, it's, it's, I'm well, not saying work's not a necessity. I'm not one of the crazy, like. I think, and I've went down this road, and, and for me, I, and I know this is where you and I differ, but we, you, you go into like, what's the point of society, right? At, when This is the, the more general question or a bigger question is like, where are we heading at this point? Obviously, in my opinion, in the wrong direction completely. Whenever you look at it from a massive point of view, when you're talking about massive amounts of people, because we're all slaves to the system. You know, whenever you get that social security number, you're part of your part. Mm-hmm. You're, you're fucking you're just a number at that point. And I don't know, man, like that's the biggest question. And I don't think anyone has the answer is what do we do about it? And even if you pay people the correct amount of money, what it. So what do you think that changes at this point? So let's say, let's say, boom, it happens. Minimum wage is $35 an hour. What do you think happens? Well, okay. Two things. One, (laughs) realistically or how it should be? Because realistically what would happen is they would raise the prices on fucking everything and it wouldn't matter. Inflation would skyrocket if minimum wage went to 35 an hour because all of these companies are still greedy and would be like, well, if we got to pay this much, we still want to increase profits year over year. It would be the same thing. It would be exactly the same. Yeah. That's the issue is it would be the same. Right. The only way you're going to get this to actually work is if you don't have this crazy, ridiculous corporate greed and your CEOs are okay with not getting a $50 million bonus. You know what I mean? Like, okay. like you got to have people okay. who are okay. So, so, with, said, so it's so li- they're okay with it. What is that type of environment? Okay. So... We're saying CEOs are okay with it. They're going to take money off of them, give it to the employees below them. Yes. And all of that. No inflation. Yes. Everything. Um, You have homeless people now able to get homes, purchase homes. You have people in my situation who I would consider middle class now able to, living by myself and everything, able to invest in a property and purchase a house for myself instead of just renting an apartment or whatever. You have... People who can't healthcare, that's another one because of the way our healthcare system is. You now have the ability to have insurance, pay for it without it, you worrying about your life. Um, you're not afraid to call an ambulance if something wrong. So, man, I know people that when something happens, they're like, hey, don't call an ambulance. Just drive me there. You know, oh man, I'm having a seizure. Don't, don't wake me up. Just stick something in my mouth and make sure I'm okay. And if it lasts more than two minutes, drive me to the hospital. But don't call an ambulance because I don't have the fucking money. That's absurd. You get rid of that kind of stuff. And there's there's more, too, that I can't think of off the top of my head just going into it. But you have a better overall quality of life for each and every individual. And for all we know, this is our only shot at living. You know, you yeah. take Jesse's point of view. And I, I remember, and I always remember this throughout my, the rest of my life. He's like, he's like, um, you never thought before you existed, did you? 
kind of essentially is what he said. Yeah, like, yeah, you're talking about the whole no afterlife thing. Yeah, like if you're not yeah. religious, like there's there's nothing before you were alive, and there's nothing after yeah. you're alive. Yeah, so, so what this is, is it? You so, got one shot. So that exactly. So it and and I'm not saying that that what Jesse said is entirely true, but when he said that, it kind of stuck with me. But like, if this is the only chance that we're giving, you know, um, like we should strive towards that. And I think that there has to be a middle ground, and we're nowhere near the middle ground. Like the for the average person or the 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 poor people average middle class upper middle class which are all on the bottom end yes like all grouped together down correct here. and i haven't got into like in, there's probably like <laughs> six more categories or seven yeah. who knows like it's been absolutely it's just a rat race for all of those people mm -hmm. there's no light at the end of the tunnel you're going to continue to do this until you're unable to do it anymore which at, at that point you're getting scraps for social security if you haven't invested any money which most people don't or have a 401k or any of that type of shit or retirement. Sorry. I'd be, I would be um, interested to know the amount of people who, who don't have retirement, but anyways, something has to change. Something has to give. And if it doesn't, and we continue at this path, then we continue at this path and we're going to, people are going to continue to have this type of conversation when you and I are gone. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a podcast that doesn't get listened to that. They're having the same exact conversation and to me, it's just unfair that society has taken that route, that we just don't give a shit, man, that we're literally so divided. We're literally, we're just against each other. Well, they play us against each other too. That doesn't fucking help. No, it, it doesn't. And, it, and, and when I go out in public and I see people and I'm grocery shopping and I look at people, I smile, excuse me, pardon me. Uh, thank you for holding the door, all that type of shit. Like it's like that shit still exists. Like we're all still cordial in, in some aspect, but it doesn't change the thought process that social media and major news network major news networks you know shape our brains and all that type of shit <laughs> obviously they're winning because we're not changing yeah. you know what i'm saying it's like we have to do something now if okay. if not then this will just continue and continue and we'll continue to be slaves there are enough resources on this earth right mm -hmm. for people to be living a legitimate life Fuck supply and demand. Well, supply, man, I think hold on, hold on. That wrong. No, no, supply no, no. Fuck, fuck supply and demand. Go out and grow a garden. Oh, I get what you're getting. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not really taught that in school, botany, go to, you know. I wish that it was, like, forced upon me to learn how to grow fruits and vegetables once you get your own house or apartment or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you have a little bit of space. You but can, in, all, in all fairness, you can learn that. If you have if you have access to the internet, you Any, can learn that. Anyone and everything can learn. What I'm saying is that fuck the education system. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But what, like, man, like we went in a very wrong direction. Is I ultimately what I'm coming what is coming down to with all this inflation talk and, and minimum wage and all this shit, man, and divide and conquer. And it's like, man, like, dude, we're all against each other because it's heavy. It, it's very heavy, but it doesn't have to be that way, man. It doesn't. We can I don't know, man. I feel like just like you, we just need to sit down and we need to figure out a way. The 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 problem is that even us, and we don't realize there shouldn't it, be a problem. We're we're fortunate enough to be able to have these conversations. Like there are some people out there, man. So where I work, and I'm trying to be not very specific, just in case, because I even think some people that I work with might listen to this occasionally, like once every like year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just in case. But where I work, like, I feel bad because there are employees there who are making much less than me, who work more hours than me. And I'm not talking much less hourly, which is the case, but I mean just overall. Like, they are putting in more time than I do. They are spending more of their life working for a company that they don't want to be at, making money for the higher-ups while they're scraping by, making less than what I make, working less time. And it's, it's, man, I kind of lost my train of thought here, but it's, it's those kind of people that I'm like, I would love to like help them out somehow and be like, Hey, we need a band together. And once again, like unionization and stuff and talk about like better wages and like, y'all should get paid more. Like you should definitely get paid more than what you are, or you shouldn't be working here and this company should fail. And the problem is though, they can't. They can't because if they take the time off work to do that, let's say you unionize and all this, you and do, they need to go on can't strike, to do it, yeah. they can't afford to do it because they, they, they got to have food for next week. And like again, they're literally living paycheck to paycheck. You know what I mean? Sometimes not even paycheck to paycheck because it's like 
man, it's three days until payday. I need to go get a fucking loan, it's, a payday loan, a cash loan or whatever, like just so I can survive. It's not like they're out there buying a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff either. You need, oh yeah. And even if they are at that, and I don't even really want to go down that road, but if, if for people who are out there, when Johnny says something like that, like, well, man, he's a fucking socialist and he just wants everyone just to put in and, and some people might work harder and, and some people might work less and they all make the same amount. Fuck terminology at this point. There doesn't need to really be terminology. We're yeah, all, yeah. We're don't, all, don't call it socialism. Don't call it capitalism yeah. or anything like yeah, that. Communi- just like, dude, speak, all, speak without the terms. Yeah, we're all human beings. We're just love. Yeah, love, right? give a shit about other people. Yeah, and I, and I don't really know what that means because we've been force fed the type of environment that we're in. So I mean, this is all I know, and this is why I've created what I've created, um, and I enjoy it. You know, uh, for the amount of time that I've put in, but if the world could be better throughout. Like if every, if more people could be happy than what they are now, would I change my way of life for that type of environment? I think I would. And I don't know what that means and what it would change for me. And I think that would be the biggest like thing for people to think about whenever you, we talk about like universal basic income or whatever love is or whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Like how would that change your life? Um, I guess we really wouldn't know until we tried it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know until it happens. Like, yeah. You can only guess. Right, you until can't. enough people are just fed up, like you I said. I could be wrong. I, I doubt it for the most part. But if I this is our one shot, wrong. man, and, and everyone got to take two weeks off and they could be fine and just hang out with their family and friends, and, I don't know, man. Again, and I, and I bring this back to Zeitgeist. Uh, Which I've never seen. Yeah, and, and I could be misquoting this or misinterpreting how I viewed what they portrayed a utopia as but it's just like and i think we've mentioned it on the podcast before it's like in your community like you work one or two days a week and you improve upon your community and everyone just alters and twenty thousand people live in our town Mm -hmm. you know 80 percent of those people are adults or 70 percent and those 70 percent of those 70 percent who are adults 50 percent of those people can are able-bodied and can work you know you have mental issues blah 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 50 or even 40 percent 40 percent of people could probably run that city if they yeah. all work together. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just... Uh, it greed. To what I said about the whole, man, like robots taking over jobs and ever being being like people are losing their jobs. That is the case right now with the system we have, but it shouldn't be that way. Like, in, man, in all reality, like us as a... Ignore capitalism for a, se- a second. Ignore profit and money for a second. In general, you've got this one life. You've got this one life to live. You're here on this earth for a set amount of time. You should try to be happy. If we, if a person, it's kind of like finding the cure for cancer or whatever. If I develop something that makes the work that these three people do obsolete, I don't need you guys here at my company anymore because I've now made something that does your jobs. That should be a good thing, and they should still get money. Congrats. We are bettering ourselves as a society. But instead, that one not person. not requiring people to work anymore. But instead, that one person gets double, the triple the amount of salary at that exactly, point. Exactly. Exactly. That's what's happening. And those happening. three people have to look for new jobs. That's insane. No, and it shouldn't. The whole point is you're making the. If, if I come up with something that makes it to where people don't have to. I'm trying to do this. Once again, ignore profit. Let's not talk about money for a second. Just purely like. If I create something that allows three people not to have to work at that job, that should be a good thing. Ignoring the money aspect, like that should be good because now you have these three people aren't, you're not required to have this person here to make the French fries so that when you go in and order French fries, you have to, you know, there has to be a person here to make them for you. We've got a robot to do that now. So that person doesn't have to be at work. They can be at home or following their passion or doing whatever the fuck they want to do. They're not required to be here anymore. Shouldn't change the money aspect. They shouldn't, you know what I mean? Like it's, man, capitalism just fucks up it's a lot. A facade, money man. fucks up a lot. Greed fucks up a lot. It like, does. And, and and even with, I'm sure during uh, bartering and trading, whatever that was, I'm sure there was some fucked up shit going on then too. There always is because at the end of the day, humans are flawed. There's, yeah. There's, someone always wants to be a king or a queen. Yeah. Someone always wants to rule over everyone else. And on the opposite end, you've got people who are so incredibly lazy, they don't want to do anything at all. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's, there's both There's both sides of the spectrum. But there's a balance, man. Yeah. And I think the balance is what we have to strive towards. And 
I don't necessarily think that that's what this balance is that we're currently in. No, it's aw- it's awful right now. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, 100%. And it's been that way for quite a long time. And I know we bring back, you know, we go back and we've had Pat on the show and we've talked about what it was like before the gold standard changed and people could work. I'm sure even then there was some fucked up shit going on that we really don't know about. Maybe it was mm-hmm. more affordable at the time. but It probably sh- always has been. Yeah. Through time. Yeah. Different ways, but. Right. Because someone's always been making a large amount of money while it's more than is ever needed. Yeah. Of the sufferings of the backs of millions. Yeah. If you know, and you go back in time, hundreds of thousands, whatever. How many people have to die for you to have your yacht? Yeah. Like that's what you should look at it. And like how many people have to die for you to have your pyramid? Yeah. How many, how many souls did this yacht cost? You know, I got this new, I got, Man, I got four new cars today for, you know, two Bugattis and a Rolls Royce and a, a you know, Lamborghini or whatever. Like, how many lives did that cost? And how that, much did your private jet, like, not how much money, like, how many people are working for you so that you could buy your private jet and you're paying them table scraps and they literally can't afford health care. And if something well, happens, they can't afford, let's you just, know, insulin for their fucking so grandma. Like, let's just, um, it's fucked. Let's man. go out it's there with so dark. It's fucked. It is. But let's go out there. And I know this is dismal. We've been, you know, we've tried to shed a little bit of different types of uh, conversation out there. But let's say we continue on this path that we're going on with the continuation of automation and what it's doing and the amount of jobs that are being lost due to automation And let's look into the future a little bit and let's just go 50 to 60 years and see the amount of jobs that are going to be lost due to automation. Just imagine the profits that these corporations are going to make off of all these people losing their jobs and what type of environment that's going to create. And you see it in movies where people are striking and like, fuck, you know, like you see war with just, I, that's probably what that's going to create because they're not going to, they're not going to, in 50 years down the road, they're making just insane amounts of money unless they're smart and they're like, okay, we need to do something and pay these people scraps, but they're just going to give us scraps. Well, they, they constantly, here's the thing is there's that, there's this weird balance of, and we've talked about they it. They will give you just enough, just enough to yeah. get by. They know how to do it. They've been threading the needle and also sell you stuff because they still, you need to pay them so that they make a profit. You need to use their store. You need to but with buy auto- their items. With automation being uh, exponential, there's, I mean, they're going to find a way around that. And they, I'm they're not, they'll, find, they'll find that balance of like the jobs will always still be there. There will always be the, the shit jobs I don't, that nobody wants to work I that don't, doesn't pay enough because they will purposely make those jobs exist. I don't think they'll ever wring the towel dry. Ever. Yeah. yeah no, that's what I'm, yeah. They'll never ever. But they're, what I'm saying is they can continuously squeeze it and water just keeps coming out. They like they know how to thread the needle and they're just gonna keep doing it until like literally it's like ready player one where like you're just in, in a fucking box or a, or like Wally. Like I mean that's just that's the end result of humankind. At this yeah, point and when you really at this fucking point, that's what it is. They're probably gonna get to the point this gets real scary, but I it wouldn't surprise me. This is kinda of, this is kinda of out there. This is very out there. But it wouldn't surprise me if somewhere at some company, some higher up there's some kind of paperwork that maybe doesn't say this exactly, but when you read into it, could equal out to this when you're putting the numbers and the money together and stuff and how much they're paying people and stuff. There's probably this weird balance of like, hey, we can have 20% of the workers working for us die off from like health issues. And we can, we can you know, the amount we're paying, the amount that we're paying people we're probably going to lose 20% of our workers to death because of, you know, man, they work so hard and all this, you know, it has to get a hip hip implant that puts them out of commission because can't afford it and all this and stuff. And then this guy had a heart attack and all like they, they, that's probably exists somewhere. Those sheets probably exist somewhere where they're basically, we are a resource to them. We're like fucking human batteries. It's like the matrix. You know what I mean? They're like, Hey, We've got 100 human batteries working for us, and we've looked at the numbers, and as long as every year we only let four of those batteries go out and die, we're fine and we can stay profitable. And they've got, that, they've got that number somewhere. Oh, yeah. 100% That's insane. That is insane. And that probably exists. Not in that way, but... Oh, it definitely exists but, in that way. <laughs> and that's, man, that's scary to think about. It's, de- it's depressing. I hate these conversations. I like talking about it because I want there to be change. 
and we've had this conversation before off the podcast where there's sometimes when me coming over here, I'm like the stuff we talk about, it is, it is depressing because I think about it all the time anyways. For sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, we had a a couple different ways though. I mean, we, I, again, that's kind of why I asked you what would a environment look like if we were all kind of just in the middle and everyone lived the same. I don't Maybe that's the thing is well, like we always think is people assume with universe. I'm sorry. I straight up just cut you you're off. You're fine, man. People assume with like stuff like universal basic income and all this that like, oh man, nobody will want to work and all that. That's not the case because the whole point is that if you work, you make more like you want everybody. It's the same with minimum wage. Ignore universal basic income for a second. You want people to every person who is working or not working should be able to be alive and live their life. They should have food, shelter, and whatever the other third basic need is, I don't remember. Maybe it's water or something. I include that with food, but whatever. The the basic fucking human needs. Every single person on the planet We're there. should be able to have that. We're we at, have the ability to do that yeah. as a society, not just as a nation, as a, as a worldwide planetary like species. We have the ability to do that right now. And you assuming that everybody would just stop working and be okay with the bare minimum? No, because greed exists and because wanting exists, you're still going to have people go to work and try to get more and better themselves. But what I'm saying is we need to raise up the minimum. The minimum shouldn't be, I have to die because I can't afford health care. I, I don't have a place to live. I, all that, like that should, uh, man, there was a country that did it. And I don't remember which country it was. I have to look it up. It was probably somewhere over like Finland or Sweden or some shit where they like tested solving the homeless problem. And you know what their solution was? They got them all houses, not houses. Maybe it was like apartments, like apartment complexes, but they were literally like, Hey, for free for a year, here you go. Everybody has a home. We're just giving it to you. And those people didn't just take it for granted and whatnot. A lot of them ended up cleaning up their act or whatever because they had a home. They had a place for their kids to be. They had showers. They had all this stuff and went out there into the workforce and then started paying for that home after the first year. Crazy how that fucking works. You want to stop homelessness, give them fucking homes. We've got the resources. Like we've got it. You want to stop all these people dying from medical fucking issues? Stop charging. I shouldn't have to cut off my arms so that I could pay for my heart surgery. Right. So, yeah, it's deep. It's very deep. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying everybody should be 100% equal. That's never what I've gotten at. You're always going to have people who work harder or whatever that make more money. Once again, going back to multiple, multiple, multiple podcasts ago, all I'm saying is that line should be closer. Yeah. The bottom is is way down here in hell. Like, it's in hell right now. The bottom tier is is just through the muck. Like, it is bad. And then the top tier is up in the clouds. Bring that closer. Let's all live on Earth. You know what I mean? Right. Like. I don't think that's too hard to ask for, man. Yeah. I think that there are ways that we could go about in, in making that happen. Let's go from uh, from heaven and hell to, you know, city and penthouse. Like, yeah. let's bring it down. De- like, like. Let's bring that line together so that where everybody can live their fucking life and be healthy. Exactly. That's all I want. Yeah. You can have a better life than other people and all that, but there's nobody who should just be dying because healthcare is not an option for them. Right. And I keep using healthcare as the example, but so much other stuff, man, childcare is not an option. School can't afford to go to school and get the educated. list goes on and like, on. It's, man. it's everything. Yeah. We've went about it the wrong way. And I think in the podcast, that's kind of what we tried to portray throughout the past four years of this podcast is that something's not right. And I think with us and having the amount of guests that we've had on is we're just trying to shed light and bring peace, peacefulness to this world, man. And I'm not saying that we have all the right answers or any of the guests that we've had no. on are 100% correct, but just our goal is exactly what you're talking about, Johnny. And I'm not saying I agree 100%. I just want people to give a shit about yeah. other people. Yeah. It's that simple. And I'm not saying I agree with everything that you've said tonight or throughout life, but, man, I love you. I'm very grateful to have you in my life. You, Jesse, anyone who's around me. And I just want all of those people to be able to live their lives too. That's it. And if my life has to change, and and again, and that's the thing is like, that's a whole different podcast and how that environment would be. I'm not saying that you or I know how that would work, but we have to strive towards that. And we're not. We're going down the deepest, darkest hole as a society that we possibly can. 
where in 2022 there's still war going on when innocent civilians want nothing to do with that war. Yeah. And people are like, we're not going down the right path. And there's people a, just want to live their fucking that's lives. That's it, man. That's, that's it. It's, it's that simple, man. That's it. It's And this sounds like heartless, but it's not. It, it, it's, man, like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, let me do what I want to do if I'm not hurting you and vice versa. And I'll help you so that you can do the same. Yeah. Like, if someone needs help, they need help. And you, you help them out and stuff. But then putting that all on us of like, oh, well, then why don't you donate to every homeless person you see? I mean, I have a lot in the past. I don't as much anymore. But it's because I'm also struggling. Yeah. Like, I'm also, like, I got to pay for my own shit, man. Like, no. have some of the higher-ups that have way more than they'll ever need fucking help. Once yeah. again, bring that line. Bring that line a little closer. I'm right there with you, man. That's uh, going to be it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We hit a little bit over an hour. Solid podcast tonight. Uh, would really appreciate it if you guys could put in the comments below. Wolf Flow, appreciate you as always, my man. Uh, just always putting some good comments in there. Well, Flo, uh, you might be our most, and I know there's some others, but you might be our most regular, like, like, every, like, like, comments dick, dick and all strong that shit. Yes, every, I love every it, podcast. Man. Fucking it's love great. It. My cousin Bobby, I know you're listening, man. If you, I read them all too, I may not ever comment on there like Paul does. I think I've only commented like twice, probably. Yeah, I read them all. Yeah, that's where it's at, man. We appreciate it, and honestly, if it stays that way, I'm going to continue to do it because this is what I love to do. Other than play Rust, <laughs> um. But that's where we're at, man. Appreciate you guys uh, and gals tuning in, listening to us, Talk Junkies. Uh, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification to all our junkies out there. Stay fly. Ring the bell.